2011, Earth's seven billionth resident was born into a world of contradiction and change. There could be enough food for all, yet a billion are still hungry. Throughout this year, people around the world were seeking freedom from oppression and better opportunities for themselves and their families. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Seven billion now look to us, the world's leaders. They need solutions. They demand leadership. They want us to act. Saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, these are one and the same fight. In Libya, Colonel Gaddafi's security forces began systematically shooting at peaceful protesters. More than 600,000 people fled the fighting and chaos, and Ban Ki-moon urged the international community to ensure the protection of civilians. I have spoken out bluntly and repeatedly. The violence must stop. In March, the Security Council adopted a resolution with 10 yes and five abstentions to take all necessary measures to prevent further attacks and the loss of innocent lives in Libya. Susan Rice, permanent representative of the United States. The Security Council has authorized the use of force, including enforcement of a no-fly zone, to protect civilians and civilian areas. Soon, NATO began a bombing campaign. UN humanitarian agencies delivered vital supplies to the population. With casualty numbers rising, Russia's ambassador Vitaly Churkin voiced his concern. Any act going beyond the mandate or any disproportionate use of force is unacceptable. In October, Libyans greeted the death of the dictator with celebratory gunfire. Yet weeks of relentless urban conflict have reduced cities to ruins and hospitals are filled with the wounded. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the President of the General Assembly, Nasir Abdulaziz Al Nasser, made an historic visit to Libya. The road ahead for Libya and its people will be difficult and full of challenges. Now is the time for all Libyans to come together. In Syria, pressure was on for President al-Assad to step down after thousands of people were killed in pro-democracy protests. The General Assembly voted on a resolution condemning Syria for the ongoing violence and called for the government to end all human rights violations people in the streets of Ramallah cheered the news that their president, Mahmoud Abbas, had presented an application for full UN membership to Ban Ki-moon. After 63 years of ongoing tragedy, enough, enough, enough. The time has come for the Palestinian spring, the time for independence. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu we have to stop negotiating about the negotiations. Let's just get on with it. Let's negotiate peace. Meanwhile, on the ground in the occupied Palestinian territory, housing demolition for Israeli settlement building continued. On to item 40, a request for the admission of Palestine to UNESCO. UNESCO granted yes. Palestine full no. membership. The decision is adopted in Hama. <laughs> leading to the withdrawal of, of U.S. funding for the organization. To express our strong opposition to this resolution. In July, the newborn country of South Sudan became the 193rd member state of the United Nations. After decades of civil war in Africa's largest country, the U.N. helped organize a referendum on unity or separation. At over 100, Rebecca Kadi, was one of the oldest voters to take part. She was telling me, after I vote, if I'm dead, I will be very, very happy, because I finish everything. Over 99% supported separation, and on the 9th of July, a new country was born. Like any newborn, South Sudan needs help. Together, South and North, 
must face their common future as partners, not rivals. Still, tension persists in the border regions. 4,200 Ethiopian troops were authorized by the Security Council to provide the much-needed peacekeeping force. In 2011, more than 120,000 UN peacekeepers were deployed in 16 missions on four continents. Dozens died in the line of duty. In Afghanistan, seven UN staff members were killed when a crowd of 3,000 people protesting against the burning of a Quran in the United States turned violent. Only days later, a plane crash in the Democratic Republic of the Congo took the lives of 35 UN personnel. And in Nigeria, 18 people were killed in a terrorist attack in the UN office in the country's administrative capital, Abuja. In Liberia's presidential elections, the UN mission deployed ground troops and increased air patrols to improve security and reassure citizens as they went to the ballots. Voters turned out undeterred, despite some clashes that prompted the boost in security. President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was not only re-elected, she was also one of three women activists who were jointly awarded the 2011 Nobel Peace Prize. The arrests of former Côte d'Ivoire president Lauren Gbagbo in April and accused war criminal and former Bosnian Serb military leader Radko Mladic in May provided further evidence that the era of impunity may come to an end and the rule of international law is here to stay. Haiti slowly recovered from a major cholera epidemic. One year after the devastating earthquake, 40% of the 10 million cubic meters of rubble have been removed. The UN Development Program and other UN agencies created jobs in a pilot project to transform some of the debris into gravel to build new homes and schools. UNICEF brought in supplies. Now, 140,000 children who have never been enrolled before are going to school. Haiti's new president, Michel Martelly. Step by step, we are going forward on the way to bring every child to school for free. Thailand has seen the worst flooding in 70 years. Unusually heavy rainfalls left large parts of the country, including the capital, Bangkok, inundated. A report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warns that global warming will cause more extreme weather, more floods, more heat waves, and more droughts. In Somalia, war and the worst drought in decades uprooted a million and a half people. The World Food Program opened feeding centers, bringing relief to millions in desperate need. Executive Director, Josette Sheeran. It's very dangerous and risky, but we have to reach people. Hundreds of thousands of Somalis walked for weeks to Kenya, but many did not make it. The Dabab refugee camp, the world's largest, became the third biggest city in Kenya, with almost half a million residents. The UN's refugee agency, UNHCR, airlifted thousands of tents to ease the overcrowding. Famine has spread over Somalia, but the consequences of the drought affected the whole Horn of Africa. These farmers lost half of their livestock and food supplies are running out. We live on palm nuts. There is nothing more to eat. UNICEF is scaling up nutrition and water lifelines. But planning and investment is what's needed to build long-term food security. The planet could easily feed 7 billion people. Yet millions continue to starve. High and unpredictable food prices affected poor countries the most during the global economic downturn. <laughs> UN Emergency Relief Coordinator Valerie Amos visited the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, where a third of all children are chronically malnourished. 25 years after Chernobyl, a tragedy in Japan with multiple consequences. 
A magnitude 9 earthquake, followed by a tsunami, seriously damaged the Fukushima nuclear reactor. Dedicated workers prevented a total meltdown, but a large area became contaminated as radiation spread. This was measured by the sensitive instruments of the CTBT, the UN's Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization. Experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency urged Japan to secure permanent sites to store the radioactive waste. Visiting the victims, Ban Ki-moon pledged to keep nuclear safety high on the international agenda. Nuclear accidents respect no borders. We must treat nuclear safety as seriously as we treat nuclear weapons. Tensions over Iran's nuclear ambitions have increased since the IAEA reported that the country appeared to have worked on the design of a nuclear bomb and may still be doing secret research. After being unanimously re-elected for a second term in office starting in 2012, Ban Ki-moon declared sustainable development that reduces poverty and preserves the environment as his top priority. 13-year-old environmental activist Felix Finkbeiner told politicians to stop talking and start planting. It is now time that we work together. We combine our forces, old and young, rich and poor, and together we can plant a trillion trees. Green economy will be the buzzwords for 2012's Rio Plus 20 Environment Conference in Brazil. 2012 will also be the year of sustainable energy for all, accessible to the poorest of the poor. Seven billion people need clean energy to read, sustainable agriculture to eat, and opportunities and decent jobs to live a life of dignity and prosperity.